Hi everyone. So this is um, another deck that I've recently acquired called the Luminous Spirit Prism Edition by Tina Gong, the creator of Golden Thread Terror. Hold on. The box is very elegant, one of the most elegant I've seen so far. In fact, um, at the risk of having all of you roll your eyes at me, I've actually purchased this for two reasons. One, because the cost of shipment from the US to New Zealand is about 25 US dollars, whether I buy one deck, two, three, or four decks. So up to four decks, I will have to pay 25 US dollars. And this is where either communal buying or buying from a local distributor would save you on uh, postage cost. Um, sadly, our nearest distributor is in Australia, Two Sides Tarot, that I know of um, at the moment so far. And even from Australia, sometimes shipment can be comparable to shipping from the US, depending on which side of the US the decks are shipped out of. And so um, it becomes an exercise of, um, you know, mathematical and on some part and on other parts, it's very psychological because even though I save on shipping by shipping two decks, I have effectively spent more money. Um, I will always have to spend more money buying two decks than I do buying one deck. It's just that the pain of paying $25 per deck, no matter how much the deck costs, is just unbearable sometimes. So I wanted the Golden Thread 2nd Edition, which is the recycled uh, plastic edition, but I do not necessarily want two of those because I already have the first edition. Um, so I thought, why not order the other deck, which is this one here, which I wasn't actually sure of. So I've seen Veronica Jude's flip through of it and I still wasn't very sure, but I've decided to give it a go anyway. And um, so this arrived, that's the back. And what I feel so far is that somebody said that this looks like a combination of Lion Strider and Spirit Speak. And I think they're quite right there, or at least I agree with that assessment and that impression. This is the full. I have shuffled this so it won't be on order. It won't be in order. This reminds me of a marathon runner, of uh, that person who opens up the Olympic Games. It reminds me of that person who um, marathon was named after, if I recall my um, high school lessons here, of somebody who ran and ran um, to give news to the other side during a war and then collapse and die at the other end. Um, so I thought um, whether that is indeed the intention of this depiction, I don't know. I haven't downloaded the app and as you know, there is no handbook. I think the handbook for all of uh, Labyrinthos, is it Labyrinthos or Labyrinthos? I don't know. Um, I think their, the equivalent of their handbook is their app, so I will have to do that later. But what I found is that cardstock's great. I really like the back and I really like the box. So I was chatting with Veronica Jude um, in her uh, comment section of her flip through video that I really like the box and I really like the back. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure about the art. It's lovely, but it's not, um, it doesn't stand out for me. However, upon closer inspection, I found that it is a very quiet deck. You have to sort of stare into it and you have to go to it. It won't come to you. It reminds me of the process of reading in comparison to the process of watching TV, where watching TV, it feels like things, um, it feels like you can be more passive while watching TV. You just open your eyes, you open your ears and the story will come to you, present it to you, um, put forward for you while reading. Um, a book, if you just stare at the words and you don't actually step into the act of reading, um, you know, the story won't be told. So this makes, this has that feeling for me. Um, putting the similarities in feel and aesthetic to Line Strider and Spirit Speak for a minute, 
It, this reminds me also of looking through um, antique Lenormand decks where, or um, the most recent maybe Lenormand where it's very quiet and at first glance you don't see anything too interesting but then if you stay quiet and go close like this Hold on a second Let me just put this here so that you could see the box So if let's say you it, it does speak to you a bit more, so I'll close I'll close this in, shall I? Hold on. So this death in a baby where death and new life, end of something and the beginning of something comes together hand in hand. You you can it's a very quiet, serene deck. And look at this one here. This is the Four of Cups. And the Four of Cups for me is apathy, it's comfort zone, it's an emotional state where everything is, it feels comfortable, stable, it feels steady. But if you stay in this state, things will decay and you will miss out on the opportunity to grow to the next level. You will be uh, missing out on the opportunity to self-actualize or to make realities a variety of things because you don't want to be uncomfortable and if you look at the four the three there has uh, flowers that's decaying or the two and the third cup is just empty and um you see the fourth cup de there with a butterfly that sort of sense of symbolizing or hinting that process of transformation that is still there for you to take but you have to take it and the um, pomegranate there, um, I believe associated, or at least in tarot, often associated with fertility. You see them around the high priestess a lot. You see pomegranate a lot in the card of the empress. If I am not mistaken, pomegranate is also associated with Persephone. And I think Persephone spent half of her time under in the underworld and half of our other time a background or in our world in the shape of spring and so there is that opportunity for new growth new life of fertility of growth of transformation in that one cup there is that empty there two of the cups filled with um, decaying flowers suggesting staying put because life goes round and round you can't stay put even if you want to. And by staying put, everything else continue to go round and round. And you either hop onto the cycle and follow the flow of life, or you insist on staying put where you feel you are most comfortable and things will grow and leave you behind anyway. And I mean, um, the fact that I could talk about this card, this simple image for, I don't know, what was it? A minute or two? So I thought, oh, maybe there, you know, when I saw that, I sat with it for a while and I thought, okay, I think there might be, you know, um, let's give this a deck a chance. So this particular emperor I found aesthetically quite intriguing. He looks young and old at the same time. Um, it feels almost as if his eyes are too big for his face and his chin are extremely narrow for his head. But there is that... Um, I quite like that because he is old and young at the same time, so I don't know. Um, so again, that quietness, I have to zoom in like this, I have to... So I won't flip through all the cards because if you want to look through the flip through of the cards, you can um, go to Veronica Jude's video, I'll link that below. So there is this um, growth and exchange of um, emotions have pr producing growth there in the middle almost that sense of two and one. <laughs> oh, excuse me temperance um, and again here that um, bees with the um, three elements or crystal water plant over there and the working the bee has sort of hinting at a sense of 
work ethic. Nine of Pentacles with the vegetation there. And the hand above it all. Um, Four of Pentacle, that hand clenching like that is interesting. Um, crystals. I think I found that rather than seeing the card like that, say, let's say we see the card like this. You look at that. And you just stare at it. And it feels to me like it worked much better. It's very serene and it's very quiet. That's the um, Ace of... So one drawback for me for now is the uh, court cards, like this is one of them. I haven't been able to make sense or in order for me to be able to use the court cards, I need to be able to see patterns and I haven't been able to see any patterns with um, the multitude of faces across the court cards other than that it looks like mother, father, uh, son, daughter, but in uh, some of the suits, they all look about around about the same age. So even that pattern, I feel falls short in some of the suits or in at least one of the suits. So that's the devil. It's interesting that it is pushing the faces apart from each other, um, not being aware of each other, not seeing each other, lack of awareness, lack of knowledge, lack of presence, lack of connection and that the devil for me is an absence of and a lack of it is a position without it is not a big scary thing but it's just a state of being the sun i love that depiction of the sun so it does reminds me of um looking through the norman artwork where you have to go to it to engage it it won't come to you so that's the Knight of Cups. You see what I mean? All the faces. But other than the faces, I'm not quite sure how to... Um, I haven't been able to pick up a pattern, is my point. The lovers. Male, female. I hate to describe human beings in terms of color, but obviously it is an accepted norm. Um, but black and white. Male, female. At six of Wands. So if you look at it closely, oh, close up, brother. Look, uh, speaking of the courts, I find it interesting that in uh, in decks which depict a people of variety of ethnic background, that um, the Asian-looking people is always associated with pentacles or with coins or with discs. I think it's hilarious. That sense of time passing. So it has it has a make of a very intuitive deck, this one. Um, I don't want to repeat myself, but it's almost as if it's almost as if you have to go to it, it won't come to you. This is the only markedly different characterization of the face in the court card. The King of Pentacle is the own Pentacles is the only face that's elderly here. So I thought that's interesting. Five of Cups, three and two. Eight of Cups. Flying off, going beyond, going above, moving on. Eight transformation. Strength, transformation, strife. In the craziness that is the swords here. There is a whole discussion at the moment. Um, uh, led by Patrick and Kelly about where we question where they... Um, oh, I don't... I don't... I'm not sure about this judgment because these guys look like they're in distress. Like, I see judgment as new life, as a resurrection rather than judgment. Um, I grew up Catholic um, and I know very well the theology of the last day of judgment, but I have never seen judgment like that. And so this depiction of it, I'm not too sure about because this alluded more to that kind of um, Christian sort of biblical sense of judgment rather than 
well, that's not fair to say biblical, because the biblical judge sense of judgment is also that idea of resurrection into a new life, a new being, a new era, a new existence. And that just seems like it um, addresses the perish and death without addressing the resurrection. I don't know, they just look so distressed and... Mm, yeah, might not be the best. Uh, not not my favorite, certainly. Up and down. So I feel it has the making of an intuitive deck, of an intuitive uh, depictions and visual expressions of the cards. But I feel that you must perhaps come to it rather than wait for it to come to you. And my way is to look at it really closely, like in close up. Um, but this court, the, my inability to find patterns in the court might be a stumbling block for me for now. We'll see how I go. So this is like um, spring and fall, do you think? I don't know. I associate that with the fall and that with spring. Four of Wands, that um, threshold. Fall, spring, that threshold before, that uh, half point marker before you go off into the larger journey, the Hierophant, establishment, tradition. I, I have a lot of thoughts about the Hierophant in the tarot world. People always associate the Hierophant with Abrahamic religion or religion, quote unquote. But um, as a new person in the tarot world or relatively new, I find I am in the periphery looking in I see a lot of hierophants in the tarot world, finger wagging, telling others what is and what isn't, what should and what shouldn't, like they are, um, I don't know, like they are the um, beacon of authority of all things right and correct. Okay, so that's it, I think. Um, yeah, that's it. So uh, I'll let you guys know how I go with the courts because if I can't make those courts work, this whole deck can't work. So, which would be a great pity because I kind of like the miners. So, okay, talk to you later. Bye.